welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. In this video, I thought I would talk to you about my goals regarding learning the Japanese language. So I guess I will explain to you a little bit of history about my Japanese language learning experience and what I'm doing right now in regards to that as well, being the topic of this video. Um, so I started learning Japanese about eight years ago and it sounds like a long time and it really is and as far as what have I learned in the last eight years is not that much to be honest. Um, I started learning, I had a teacher, um, we went through half of a book called uh, Mina no Nihongo which is a Japanese uh, textbook, it's a respected grammar book. We got about halfway through which is very basic Japanese, it's not anything uh, enough for conversational fluency at that point but you know we, we'd got about that far at that point I stopped I started working um, just stopped focusing on Japanese just watching anime and reading manga and you know that sort of stuff um, and then I didn't really take it any any anywhere from there I bought a bunch of textbooks you know over the last eight years I've acquired a series of textbooks and you probably, you probably see all my Japanese language learning textbooks up there I have uh, quite a lot of them now um, and every year I've, I've come back to this like moment where I'm like I'm gonna learn Japanese and I'm gonna do it this year and if I had done that eight years ago I'd probably be speaking fluent Japanese by now and that is the trigger for this video and this train of thought um, having spent that much time and not really getting to where I wanted to be, I thought, right, that's it. It's time to put my foot down and actually learn the language. I've got all the resources here. It's time to do it. I needed some motivation and a goal in mind to to really focus on that idea. And so my wife and I, we booked a trip to Japan in the middle of next year, in, in June specifically. Um, it's the end of November right now, which puts me at the beginning of December, like obvious. Um, but that means that there's six months of time between now and then to really step up my Japanese um, speaking and knowledge. So a little bit about where I'm at right now. Obviously, it's very hard to pinpoint what my level is today because I've spent eight years, you know, learning a bit from here and a bit from there and a little bit from here and picking up language, watching TV, and reading manga and things like that. As far as where it is right now, I can clearly say that I don't know enough vocabulary. One of the biggest things with my Japanese language as it is today is that I don't know enough vocabulary, uh, plain and simple. I spent a little bit of time every year for about eight years learning grammar. I go to the textbooks, I read grammar. So I know a lot of grammar. I probably know about an N4 level of grammar. I know all of the basics uh, regarding, you know, wa, des, mas form, imas, I know when to use, I know suru becomes shite, all of those kind of like rules, I know how to use te form and ta form, I mean it's the same thing, but it's not the same thing, but the way that you use them is the same, um, tai form, uh, I know I know a little bit about like verb conjugations in that regard, like how to make a verb rather than I have something or something is happening to I want to do something or let's do something, so I probably have an N4 roughly level of um, grammar, but I don't have the vocabulary to back it up. And that's the problem is that, I mean, that's the problem right now is that I can't really use those concepts because I've gone through the textbooks over eight years and haven't learned enough vocabulary to get to that point. So vocabulary is certainly not an N5 level. It's probably N5. I mean, that's about 200, 300 words um, that you can use like with you know fluency uh, which I have definitely have that but um, definitely not more than N5 is what I'm saying so over the last month I started drilling vocabulary I spent 30 days with a core 1000 deck of flashcards and I drilled a thousand words and uh, in 30 days I think I'd made it to about 80 or 90 I set myself a goal I said in, in, in eight weeks I want to know the core 1000 words in a month's time, I was about 800, 900 of the way there. Another week, I'd been, I'd made it to the thousand. So, no problem. That was done in in a week. And of that thousand words, 75% of them now I can use fluently. Um, this is just words in hiragana. There is, there's no kanji involved at all at this point. This is just speaking back and forth. Beyond the words, it goes without saying that having been studying. On and off for eight years, I can fluently use hiragana and katakana. Um, 
with no problem, that's fine. Um, I don't know any kanji, that's the big one obviously, and I never really started kanji studies. So I got myself a book, um, Remembering the Kanji by James Haysig, I think his name is. Um, it's a book that goes through 2000 kanji and uses a whole bunch of mnemonic techniques to learn them. I'm not going to go into details, I'm just, that's, uh, that's the method I'm going to use. Um, and so I guess what I'm saying is that six months until we go to Japan, I want to be conversationally fluent. I want to be able to hold a conversation to a capacity that is more than just asking simple questions and receiving simple answers. At this point in time, of course, I could say, you know, very simple things like, excuse me, how much is this? Uh, kore wa, oh, sorry, sumimasen, kore wa ikura desu ka? That's a, a very simple phrase. Um, but that's exactly what it is. It's a phrase. It's something that... I, I learned as a phrase, I know what all the pieces mean, I know how the grammar works in that phrase, but receiving an answer for that, I could probably get as well because I know my numbers, but um, what I'm saying is that those simple phrases are really all that I can use at the moment. I know enough vocabulary to use phrases and to put together very simple sentences um, and to read and receive very simple sentences as well. And in six months time, I'd like to be conversationally conversationally fluent um, is the word I'm looking for and so how am I going to get there well I think the it doesn't make sense to say I'm going to start by learning to read but that is exactly what I'm going to do I've got six months and part of being in Japan is going to be reading signs directions um, you can get around in Japan without that stuff but I'd like to to get around uh, in a more natural way without getting lost so much and you know etc knowing what we're eating when we're eating it um, and it won't be that big of a problem because my wife she speaks almost fluent japanese anyway so there's no real problem there. this is more for me to learn um to satisfy my own personal requirements when being in japan to 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 exist in a place that to ex sorry to exist in a place using a language that i don't know for personal goal satisfaction if that's even a cohesive sentence in english my god he doesn't even speak english um what i'm trying to say is that i have six months worth of time and this is the introduction to a progress vlog i guess you could call it i'm going to be recording myself as i as i go through this process starting today i'm working on the 2000 kanji um, I'll be learning those in roughly three months. It works out to be about 20 kanji a day. Um, obviously, using mnemonics and this method, I'm not going to be learning the readings, but that will come separately. Readings will come through knowing what a kanji means and then reading it alongside or in context or in text with furigana, which is hiragana on top of the kanji so that you can read it when you don't know how to read the kanji. On top of that, I have a Japanese teacher now. Um, I've booked him out every week for the next six months. So I have one week, one hour. Um, I'm using the website preply.com, so uh, a Skype tutor. Um, I've had uh, six or seven lessons with him now and he's absolutely great. Knows everything that he needs to know to be a efficient teacher. Um, in addition to that, I have gone through Genki 1 and Genki 2 again. Um, this time I just blasted through it because, like I said, over the last eight years, I've learned most of the grammar concepts from those two books. Um, it's just vocabulary that was the, the sort of limiting factor up until this point. Um, and on top of that, I'm using some more some new resources, uh, coscom.co.jp, which is like a, it's like Genki online. It's a website. You go there, you pay them a fee, get access to the website, and it's great. It's it's like Genki, but the entire book is almost all in Japanese. Um, so I'm using that with the teacher. It's a really good book. Um, what else? Remembering the kanji, the book to go through, remembering kanji, obviously. And then on top of that, I'm going to just continue with general content immersion. So I'm reading manga. I've got uh, like the entire Naruto back there. If you follow me on Twitter, you've probably seen me upload that. Um, and the Yotsuba... Uh, set there as well. So I'm going to be reading lots of manga and watching lots of anime um, and listening to Japanese music and we have Japanese cable here. Like I said, my wife is uh, a fluent Japanese speaker, so we watch Japanese TV. So continuing with immersion um, techniques, uh, the theory behind those 
without getting into too much depth, is just that you flood your brain with Japanese content, and it starts to do its own thing. Um, you might learn a word, and you may have heard that word before, or seen it somewhere, and your brain has already sort of received all this information and stored it. So your active learning supplements your passive learning, which is your uh, immersion, which is the things that you're learning through immersion. You build stronger links of of neurons, you know, uh, between pieces of brain content. You know, you have like a word that you've learned and you've seen it in ten different places. Well, the neurons will be formed to all of those individual pieces of information that you've seen before, and you get a stronger memory recollection of the word that you're trying to learn because you had flooded your brain with all this information that you didn't understand before. On top of that, you end up going through a bit of a process where you lose the filter. Your brain has this kind of filter where it kind of like, if you don't understand it, it, it's, it, it kind of ignores it. It's like, what is this? I haven't, I don't know what it is. I'm going to like push it aside and ignore it. So you immerse yourself, you lose that filter. You get the ability to bring in lots of information and store it and save it. And, um, brain's like a computer really um but anyway uh, off topic so immersion remembering the kanji um japanese lessons uh that's it that's uh that's what i'm doing for the next six months so i thought i'd make an update video a introduction to this process i will probably make another video a little bit like this but a bit more scripted a bit more demonstrating the things that i've learned over the next end period whatever that interval is so yeah that is my process that's what i'm doing that's how i'm doing it and if you guys have any suggestions if anyone on here has learned japanese before and you have a resource a tip or you know anything please let me know because one of the things that i've done before i started this was just to scour the internet for information i've, I've read through every blog post i could find i've watched every ted talk i've learned about a little bit about neuroscience and the way the brain works in storing information and just brought in all of this supplemental information to to assist with this process um so if you have information if you have something if you have experience tips suggestions websites content even manga that you think is uh, suitable for people to read while they're starting out i've, I've got yotsuba um i've got uh, shirokuma on order which is a shirokuma cafe which is a panda book um kids children's books very easy to read and um, naruto and dragon ball sd as well um which is the remake of the original dragon ball manga but this time uh, abridged shorter and i think it has furigana or as i don't think the original one did but i might be wrong on that but yeah even content if you know some content that's really good to read when you're at this level um any tips information whatever you've got uh, <laughs> I was just thinking of uh, Rick and Morty. Show me what you got. I'll inject that right here. Um, let me know. I'm more than interested to go through that content. And uh, if you're interested in following along with this journey, there will be another video like this sometime in the future. Subscribe to the channel. Um, join along. Uh, if you're studying Japanese, best of luck to you as well. And I hope that maybe if this process works for me, sharing this information with you guys, putting it out there, putting it on the internet in a place that other people can see in six months time when a video comes out, when I'm in Japan, when I'm speaking, that from this point, if you see this video and you see the next video and you're like, wow, that guy has done amazing in six months, I'd like to do that as well, that this becomes an inspiration for someone else to go through that path. So I know this video wasn't really cohesive it wasn't scripted i didn't plan this video i just sat down put the webcam on and grabbed my microphone to start recording i know it wasn't highly planned it was just i've been doing a lot of that lately is just throwing up some content and seeing how it does online but especially with something where it could help someone else in their own process i i, I love to share that sort of stuff because i i see people do the same thing and that's inspirational for me so you know, a, a perfect example of that is I'm watching a YouTube channel. I will link it in this video. It's called Japanese in a Year. It is a guy who literally from nothing uh, started learning Japanese and he's uploaded vlogs and videos throughout his entire process up until now where at the time that I'm releasing this video, I think he's 10 or 11 months in. Um, 
and his transformation has been amazing. In one year's time, he is almost a fluent speaker. With stuttering, he stops to pause to think, but he can express anything that he wants to say almost now. He could talk to you in Japanese, and you would understand him, and he could understand you if you could talk back. So um, that was very inspirational to watch his journey. So kind of what I'm doing now. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. If you did, leave a thumbs up, share the video. Take care, and I will see you all later. Oh, Jesus, that's a terrible... Don't do that! <laughs> I'll see you all later. Bye for now. Hello and welcome. My name is Ryan. I'm also known as RM2K Dev. In this video, I thought I would talk to you today... That was my phone. Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. In this video, I thought I would talk to you today about my goals in regards to learning the Japanese language. Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan. Hello and welcome, <laughs> <f> me. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. <clears throat>